Hi students, I try in this educational video to technologically introduce the cross-section classification based on the Eurocode 3 standards, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First of all, it's to note that any beam cross-section presents several mechanical resistance properties. Among these mechanical resistance properties, we can distinguish the cross-sectional resistance to bending moment, the cross-sectional resistance to uniform compression, and the member resistance to backlink. These three mechanical resistance properties, the evaluation or the determination of these three mechanical resistance properties strongly depends on the class of the cross section. The question is, what is the cross section class? Well, based on the Eurocode 3 standards, EC3, we have four cross section classes, class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 4. And these cross section classes are associated to plastic, compact, semi-compact, and slender cross-section based on the bridge standards BS5950, as it is indicated by the table that you see now in this slide. Each one of these classes reflects a specific moment rotation behavior of the considered cross-section as it is depicted by the figure that you see now in this slide. This figure presents the cross-section rotation induced by the applied bending moment for the different cross-section classes. MP presents the plastic moment and MY presents the elastic moment. So, as you can notice, a class 1 cross-section can perform its plastic moment resistance uh, with high rotation capacity without reduction of its resistance. This means that uh, an increasing applied bending moment will continue to cause more rotation of the cross section. For the class 2 cross section, you can notice that uh, it can perform its uh, plastic moment resistance but with limited rotation capacity. This uh, rotation capacity limitation is caused by the local backlink. Well, now for the class 3 cross-section, you can notice that it cannot perform a full plastic moment resistance due to the local backlink, which occurs before reaching the plastic bending moment. Finally, for the class 4 cross-section, you can notice that the local backlink occurs before reaching the elastic bending moment. Now I will explain how to determine the class of the cross-section based on this table. And as you can see, this table presents three cases. The first one is about the flange outstand, which means flange in pure compression due to axial force or bending moment. The second case is web in bending, and the third case is web in compression. And uh, we will determine the class of the cross section for each case. And finally, the, the global class uh, cross section is determined as the less favorable, uh, which means the highest class of flash outstand, web in bending, and web in compression. Well, TF means the thickness of the flash, TW means the thickness of the web, C is determined based on the dimensions of the cross section, like the case uh, depicted now in this slide, and uh, C is determined for the case of flash outstand. As it, as it is depicted by the figure that you see now on the bottom of this slide, and C will be B divided by 2 minus TW divided by 2 minus R. B is the basis of uh, the cross section, TW is the thickness of the web, and R is the root radius. And uh, for the case of web in bending or uh, compression, uh, C is determined as it is depicted by the figure that you see now uh, in the bottom, uh, in the right bottom of this uh, slide. Well, uh, C will be determined as H minus two times uh, the thickness of the flange 
minus two times the root radius. H here means the height of the cross section, TF means the thickness of the flange, and R means the root radius. Now for the determination of epsilon, epsilon is determined by the table that you see uh, in the right uh, or on the right of this slide. So uh, epsilon is determined as the uh, square root of 235 divided by Fy and Fy is the yield strength of the material and uh, the yield strength of the material uh, depends on the material and also it depends on the nominal thickness uh, as it is indicated by the table of the minimum yield strength. Now let's examine the table. So when we have to determine the class of the cross section uh, in the case of the flange outstand, if C divided by TF is lower than nine times epsilon, uh, the class of the cross section is considered class 1. If C divided by TF is lower than 10 times epsilon, the class of the cross section will be class 2. And if C divided by TF lower than 14 times epsilon, the class of the cross section will be 3. And if the cross section does not meet the limit requirements of class, uh, class 3, it will be considered as class 4, and so on for the case of web embedding and web in compression. And as I said before, the class of the cross section, the global class of the cross section, will be the highest class of flash outstand, web in one embedding, and web in compression. It's to note here that in general, the parts subjected to compression gives uh, less favorable class than the parts subjected to bending. That's all for this educational video. If you have any remarks or suggestions or questions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much.